Today we are going to take a look at the second part of our new two part series called Mari and the Goombas become friends. In the first video Mari was forced to leave all the Koopas and Goombas he met healthy and alive. Because in the previous video hurting an opponent meant hurting oneself. But today, today things are even more complicated for poor plumber because pure pacifism isn't enough today. Mario's only chance to survive today's video is to actually become active and to help all the little poor Goombas and Koopas because only if Mario saves them, he will be able to save himself. So are you ready? Let's do this. Mario's day starts in front of a Koopa. Usually Mario defeats every Goomba and Koopa he sees as soon as possible. But this isn't necessary here, since this Koopa actually decides to defeat himself. He walks straight into the lava and rewards Mario with a key while doing so. How awesome! But it gets even better, next Mario meets a couple of Goombas, but there are power blocks near them which makes defeating them really easy. It looks like Bowser built this castle in a way that it is really easy to defeat all the enemies here. That is, if the enemies don't straight up walk into the lava themselves. What an awesome castle for Mario to play in! Sadly, there is a twist, because at the end of this stage a locked door and a vine await Mario. The locked door clearly leads towards an ouching saw blade above lava, so Mario probably would prefer not to go this way. Sadly, he has no choice, because above the door there is an invisible block which contains a vine. Invisible blocks do not trigger if Mario climbs on top of a vine, but if Mario wants to climb on this vine, he needs to press upwards. But pressing upwards unlocks the evil ouching saw blade above lava gate. So there is no way for Mario to reach the healthy flagpole gate at the top if he collected a key previously. The only way not to have a key in this stage is by preventing any enemies from dying, since all enemies in this stage contain a key. Clever Bowser. Clever and really evil. So back to the start. This time Mario has to save all the enemies. The Koopa is really easy to save. All that Mario needs to do here is to throw him into a small prison where he isn't able to commit lava suicide. The Goombas are a little bit harder to save. Here Mario needs to use the power block in order to block the Goomba's path so that the Goomba decides not to walk into the hot liquid anymore since the power block is a really strong argument against it. Then Mario needs to avoid stumping onto enemies by accident and he needs to save a couple of Koopas again before he is finally finally able to reach the exit door alive and keyless. Now he's able to climb on top of the vine and to reach the saving exit door. Hooray! Okay, so let's talk about this door mechanism for a moment. When building a stage where Mario isn't allowed to collect the key, it is a really good idea to put a vine into the question block and to have a reset door near, since a lot of Marios that play such a stage might have no idea how this mechanism works and might trigger the invisible block by accident even if they didn't collect the key. But there is a problem with such a design. It can easily be cheesed. If Mario is on the very left side of the vine, he is able to start to climb onto it even if he has a key. That's completely unacceptable. So I tried to de-cheese this contraption and as it turned out, that was quite a challenge. The first thing I tried was to have a one-way door there and to have a shell trigger the vine. This shell is set up in a way that it only loads in once Mario is exactly on the question block that contains the vine. This should mean that the vine only appears once Mario is inside the one-way door and therefore he is no longer able to grab the vine without activating the door. Sadly, this doesn't work since Mario is still able to walk out of the one-way door after triggering the shell and then he's able to cheese it in the same way he did before. The next thing I tried was to have Mario fall into the spot from above so that it simply isn't possible to grab the vine from the far left. This works once Mario is on top of the question block. Sadly it doesn't work if Mario lands close to the exit door because then our cheesing plumber is able to grab the vine from the exit door spot while he has a key, which is again completely unacceptable. Luckily a simple conveyor belt that leads towards the reset gate solves this problem because the conveyor belt always pushes Mario behind the one-way gate after landing, which makes grabbing the vine with a key finally impossible. So if someone of you wonderful ladies and gentlemen watching this plan to build a stage where collecting keys is lethal, I'd recommend to go with this design since it is resettable and uncheesable. Or at least I'm about 90% sure that it is uncheesable. Next Mario finds himself below a bullet blaster on tracks and below a Koopa. This bullet blaster pushes the Koopa slowly towards the wall and threatens to crush it. Oh my god, can you see the panic in the Koopa's face? Mario needs to do something about this. 
or he doesn't and continues forward. The end of the stage is blocked by a small contraption which our plumber can't trigger. Only the Koopa from before is able to trigger this. So as it turns out Mario might really need to do something about this. Luckily Mario brought his awesome, stylish and favorite headgear, the shell mat. This awesome head device allows Mario to bump the Koopa up and into safety. If our plumber manages to bump the Koopa at the right times, the Koopa opens up the exit path for Mario. Mario is now able to proceed while the Goomba finds himself in the middle of a mushroom field and finally in safety. How touching. Okay, so check this out. Here Mario finds himself in the middle of a ghost house. There aren't many threats to its health, yet there is still a lot of stuff going on. In the first room, a helpful shell defeats a Goomba at the top, then another helpful shell defeats another Goomba, but this time the Goomba is at the bottom. In the next room, there is a Goomba imprisoned in a horrific prison at the top. But not only this, there is also an ice block on tracks which crushes the poor imprisoned Goomba after a while. And finally, another Goomba gets crushed and then there is a small contraption and the exit door. Sadly for Mario, walking through this contraption transforms the floor into, you guessed it, shiny yet deadly coins and drops Mario into his doom. The only chance Mario has to deactivate this contraption is by saving all the four Goombas that got defeated before. Goomba 1 can easily be saved by hitting the dangerous shell at the right time. Awesome. Saving Goomba 2 is easy as well. All that Mario needs to do here is to jump onto the shell at the right time. Sadly, there is a dangerous firebar blade which tries to prevent our plumber from doing so. But ultimately, he manages to save the walking brown mushroom. If Mario wants to save the third Goomba, he needs to platform fast towards the top. Our Italian hero has to drop the blue platform down before the dangerous ice block crushes the brave Goomba. This releases the Goomba from his prison at the top and imprisons him in a prison at the bottom. What a lucky Goomba he is. The final Goomba can be saved with a well-timed jump, so if everything worked out as planned, the contraption that destroyed the floor before should not activate now, since Mario did as he was told and saved all the Goombas. Hooray! This time Mario is able to reach the exit door. Okay, so how did all of this work? Well, it's actually surprisingly simple. It works because of an incredibly cool trick. Recently I was browsing through some comments and I stumbled over this comment by Warspiking. He mentioned that items on tracks aren't the only way to keep something globally loaded, since fire bars and items on top of fire bars stay loaded globally as well. I was like, no way. Why would they code the game like, yep. That's exactly what happens. Everything that's on top of a fire bar stays loaded in the ELB and fire bars do not unload as well. Shout out and thanks to War King for telling me about this trick. So the stage from before makes heavy use of this trick. The idea here is that the Goombas end on top of a fire bar if Mario saves them. If they are on top of a fire bar, they enter global ground and stay loaded in the entity limit B. So if Mario saves all four Goombas, then there are four Goombas stored that would not be there otherwise. At the end of the stage, we load in a bunch of Goombas on tracks and use hidden forms to donut overflow the ELB so that there are exactly 96 items loaded in. If Mario saved all four Goombas, the Goombas are still loaded since they're on top of fire bars and because of this the ELB is at exactly 100 if Mario saved all the Goombas, which means that the P-Switch isn't allowed to spawn. Awesome, isn't it? Anyway, that's it for today and for safety enemies contraction in Super Mario Maker. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel like Mario and the Goombas became especially friends today and wanted the subscribe button as well. I hope that you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye.